Yeah, and welcome to another pressure cooker exploratory video. Um, not a lot of people know this, but when I left school, uh, I was a butcher for the first five years of my working life. I was, in fact, Young Butcher of the Year, 1989. Those were the days. Anyway, I know a little bit about me. Today, I'm bra braising a brisket joint in my pressure cooker. Brisket comes from the dewlap of the animal. It's quite a fatty cut, particularly the point here, quite fatty. The rest of it has bones in it, thick bones with marrow bone, very, very good. It's a cheap cut of meat because if you just roast it for a standard sort of length of time that you might roast some meat, it, it comes out very, very tough, but it's incredibly flavoursome. If you do it right, it can be really, really good for not too much money. What I've got here is a joint of said brisket. And what I'm going to do is do that in my Hawkins pressure cooker in about half an hour. And it should come out like braised beef that has been braised for about four hours. And I've got some little goodies I'm going to put in here. Well, I hope I'm going to make it pretty spectacular. To begin with, all I'm going to do is salt and pepper the sides of the meat that I'm going to stand in the pot to brown. It's quite an important step, this. With a pressure cooker, the only colour this meat's going to get is the colour that I give it now. Once it starts pressure cooking, it won't get any browner. So I've got to be a little bit mindful of that when I'm cooking it gone like water, that's good and hot. I want it so hot that when I put the meat in there, it screams, no, oh, don't put me in there, and starts hissing. <laughs> like that. For this bit, I'm not going to agitate that or move it around. I'm just going to leave it there. The idea is to get it to start to burn on the bottom of the pan. Then I'm going to take it out and flip it over. My man was a professional cook. And while she wasn't around long enough for me to get any real tips from her, one thing I do know is, when she was making RBG, rich brown gravy, which is the highlight of almost any meal, isn't it? She would start by getting half a tomato and burning it on the bottom of the pan, just letting it burn there, and then make the gravy up from deglazing that pan. She would never use um, gravy granules, absolutely would never do that. And her food, even now, is something I remember from my childhood when I was four years old eating the stuff she used to make. My God, she could cook. I don't have a tomato, but I do have tomato puree. So I'm gonna put some of that in there in a minute. I'm gonna do both sides of this, come back to you. <laughs> Check me out. So I've just lifted that and uh, flipped it over. That's what I'm looking for, just like that. The amount really good. This amazing stuff is pickled ginger. Great for keeping on the boat because it doesn't rot. Oh my god, and it's pickled in uh, white wine vinegar, which makes it brilliant for any Chinese food because you know you put some of that in there. So I think you can see where I'm going with this now. It's going to be beef and ginger. We'll stick some bouillon in there. I'm going to make a stock for my deglazed pan. Just bring it up to about. About an inch and a half off the bottom of the pan. Not too much. There, like that. It's got to be enough to do its pressure cooking thing. And now the magic ingredient. And this is the bit, I don't know if it's available all over the world, but if you've never heard of this stuff, you need to get some. Liam Perrin's Worcester sauce. <laughs> yeah. That's to taste, really. I think it'll be different for everyone. Strong savoury taste for those that don't know. My followers in Canada and America, you might be able to get it, maybe you won't. Okay. There it is. Lovely. I'm going to put the lid on. I'm going to uh, bring it up to temperature and steam it for about 30 minutes in the pressure cooker. And that will come out as tender and flavoursome and amazing as is if it had been braised for four and a half hours. Mm. Back in a minute. Creamed mushrooms. 
mashed potato. Mm -hmm. Because what else would you have? What else would you have with braised brisket? Now, a suggestion from a friend is that uh, mustard, whole grain mustard, would go really well in here, and it would. It absolutely would. A bit of kick in mashed potato, great. But tomorrow night really is my spicy food night because I'm going to do something amazing with the leftover beef. Today I've uh, mashed a potato with just milk and butter and now that it's fully mashed I'm just going to stir in this cheese. Not mix it too much and just let it melt in there so I get pockets and streaks of melted cheese. I unpack the beef. Oh god. Oh god. Let's just stand back there. Let it rest. Oh god, that's good. Mm. Right. Stick it up a bit. Ginger is just giving it a bit of kick, you know, really, really nice. Mmm. I'm going to make that into gravy. Be right back. Bringing it back to boil, but you can already see that we've got a bit more substance in there now. It's, oh, look at that, it's crumbling. Lots oh, of fat in there. Look. That is going to be, I think. of that beef is going back in the gravy and I'm going to spice the gravy with uh, some chilies and some lime and some stuff like that. One of these days I'm going to wake up and realise that I'm a fat bastard and this will be why. To be fair though, I don't eat like this every day. I probably only eat like this once a week. And that's why I'm not a fat bastard. It is just amazing. Oh god, look. Mm. Okay. Let's see how that came out. Damn it, that is good. That is good. Best thing I ever got for the boat, that pressure cooker. Well, you know, apart from the stainless steel exhaust elbow and all the other bits and pieces, but I mean, you know, in terms of cooking gear, absolute winner. If you live on a boat, get one. Excuse me.